My first attempt at a Division C bridge this year was essentially just a scaled-up version of my Division B design accounting for the different rules. I won't go into too much detail, but it failed in a way that showed that the legs were not strong enough in the lateral direction. While I think this design, or a modified version of it, could be successful, I wanted to try something more radical for my next attempt. I think there will be two primary design directions for Division C this year. Either some sort of conventional bridge with cross supports on top like this, or a tapered design which does away with the need for the extra loading block supports, but with the trade-off being that it's a much more complicated build. Jumping right to the results, I was able to build a tapered bridge that weighed 12.53 grams and held 15.84 kilograms to achieve the bonus and score 15.96. I'm pretty happy with these results as a first attempt at this kind of design, and there's plenty of opportunity for mass optimization. Because this was such a challenging build, I wanted to share some of how I actually built it. I didn't record myself building it, but I did take some pictures along the way at key points that will help show how to build a design like this. Here is a picture of the big challenge with this year's Division C rules. This is an end view of the 7 by 12 centimeter pass-through block, which has to be able to go under the loading block across the entire span of the bridge. To come up with the required angle necessary for a nearly minimal height design, it's really handy to draw things out on graph paper. Here you can see that to get the block 15.5 centimeters above the ground with a 4 centimeter width, the angle is around 64 degrees. You can also see the pass-through line at 12.5 centimeters. It's always best to give your design a bit of extra safety margin as you don't want to have your device tiered due to a couple millimeters. The next thing I did was to create a 3D printed assembly jig, not only for assembly purposes, but to help figure out the rest of the angles and sizes. I would say a 3D printed jig isn't 100% necessary, but it would be really hard to build a bridge like this without some kind of accurate jig. My 3D printer was able to print this in five separate parts and then I just glued it together with very strong Loctite PL3 construction adhesive. Strength was much more important than looks and it worked out really well. Once I used the 3D jig to get the proper lengths and angles of one side, I drew out the design on graph paper like my previous builds. Once both flat sides were done, I used blue painter's tape and taped them together at the bottom, aligning the feet together as best I could. Then I used the sanding block to sand the top as flat as possible. Next, I taped the flat sides to the jig and needed to figure out how to cut the angled parts of the legs. Once I figured out the bottom angle, I settled on using aligning marks on both parts of the leg to help during the gluing process. Once the angled parts were glued onto the legs, I again taped them together to sand the top flat. Finally, here are both completed sides. I like to weigh them at this point to make sure they're nearly identical. In this case, they were 5.43 grams and 5.37 grams. The next big challenge with this design is that because the legs are at an angle, you can't just glue a straight piece across the legs like with the other design. This can be solved with tiny little wedges glued into place at each connection point. These were around 25 degrees for this design. With the wedges in place, now it's easy to install across supports. In this case, I use 1 8 by 1 16 basswood for the top two and 3 32 by 1 16 on the bottom. Here is the bridge right before testing at 12.53 grams. Here's the testing in progress. I really didn't know what to expect with this design, so I have my fingers crossed for sure. If you listen carefully, you can hear it start to creak at around 11 kilograms. At that point, I was really hoping for the best. I think the slow-mo footage is really interesting. The failure mode is definitely at the top, but it's cool how it bends in a bit and then holds there for a second before breaking completely. And by a second, I mean about 145 frames, which is 0.048 seconds. 
I hope you enjoy this look at a tapered design Division C bridge and that it helps you out if you decide to build something like this this season.